AWS, Azure. The two largest cloud providers in the world are finally getting closer to being competitive, but one still clearly remains on top. And today I'm gonna to tell you which one that is. Hey, what's up guys, Rocket here. Today, we are gonna be talking about AWS versus Azure. But before we jump in, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure that you do so, that way you get all the latest updates on everything that's coming out on War on Error. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So, number one, which is bigger? Cause like, which is bigger is like always the de facto determination for a lot of people who don't understand something. They just go, well, this company's got more money, so we're gonna go with them, or well, you know, they've got more properties, so we're going to go with them. Like, of course, it's all, and, and there is some, you know, reason behind it because the larger the company, the less likely it is to fail. And the larger the company, usually the more experience they have in a certain field. So AWS is larger than Azure. And it's not just larger from, I would say, a uh, physical presence because Microsoft technically has more data centers. They definitely have more of a physical presence. But AWS has more experience and they have a lot more resources and services that they offer that are much more streamlined. So you definitely wanna take that into consideration when you're deciding, am I gonna learn AWS or am I gonna learn Azure? Now, I do wanna leave one small note before we continue any further that I'm not including Google Cloud because Google Cloud only makes up like, I think it's like less than 10% of the market share for cloud providers. So. I'm leaving them out. And to put that into comparison, AWS makes up around a third, 33%. Uh, and then Azure, they make up around 20 to 25%. So you're really competing with two giants here. And so, you know, it's a really obvious fact that, of course, companies prefer AWS today because of the larger market share, right? Now, that's not to say that you don't need to give Azure some credit because as all of these traditional Microsoft shop companies are starting to uplift to the cloud, uh, let's let's talk about that just for one second before we continue on, because I do want to make this very clear. A lot of tech companies use AWS because they don't rely on Microsoft, but a lot of traditional companies have used Microsoft for decades. So why would they uplift all of their services and change all of their licensing and everything else away from Microsoft over to a brand new cloud provider like AWS? And again, I'm referring to like 10, 15 years ago here, but you're talking about asking companies to just give up everything that they've known and have to learn everything over from scratch. And a lot of companies to this day have not wanted to do that. So as Azure is growing though, it's a much easier transition for companies to swallow because at this point, most companies are paying that 365 bill. And just to put that in perspective at like a 10,000 user company like I worked for before, it was a $1.3 million bill a year. Just for office, a $1.3 million bill. So that's a lot of money. So companies are now used to spending that much money with Microsoft. And so it's going to be a little bit easier to swallow of looking at the comparison between how much is it going to cost for me to take all of these services that I currently run on the ground in my own data center and give them to AWS to run in the cloud. How much is it going to be a difference in cost and how much is it going to be a difference in, you know, effort. But now, but now with AWS, a lot Azure is becoming much more enticing too because it's all in the Microsoft family and everything talks to each other in the Microsoft family. Not to say that you can't build middleman translation things, translation scripts, translation applications to talk between the two, but you're still going to have to dedicate that time and that effort to develop those middleman applications between AWS and Azure. So number two, service offerings. AWS has so many more services than Azure to date. Um, and they're not just like a breakdown of like, you can do five, 10 different services with servers. You can do five, 10 different servers with storing stuff in the cloud. You can do five, 10 different services with, you know, uh, distributions and, you know, with networks. Like there's a lot that you can do with your regular day-to-day -day IT stuff, but there's also some really crazy stuff out there. So a lot of people don't know some of these lesser known services. Um, you can build games now with GameKit out on Amazon. I think it's called GameKit. 
uh, out on Amazon and you can have all of your code repositories out there. So if you're a software developer, all of that can be stored in Amazon now. So all of your, you know, distribution and all of your repositories, all of your Git stuff, all that can be stored up in AWS now in its own native in native services. In addition to that though, my favorite service, Ground Station. Ground Station is the coolest service I've ever seen that you can purchase basically within like a day, I think is what it takes um, to be able to use this service. But you get to rent satellites and you get to rent satellite images basically. Um, and it's it, it's not that expensive. I used to, th I, I had the assumption it was much more expensive and I think I heard something somewhere. Um, but it's $22 a minute to rent a satellite. So you might think, wow, that sounds really expensive when you do the math. Yeah, yeah, that's really expensive. But how much does it cost to freaking send a satellite to space? I guarantee you it's probably going to take you quite a long time using Ground Station to equate out that cost of sending a satellite to space. So absolutely crazy that you, you can rent a satellite for its imagery and by the minute you can just rent it. So wild, absolutely wild. Um, that I have to give AWS the hat to because not only do they have all of these different services, but they are fully built out for the most part when they come out. Azure has a history, in my opinion, of releasing things that are kind of half-baked and kind of missing some of the instructions that you may need, um, which we'll get into the documentation and the you know user adaptation at the very end. But Azure just in general has a history of releasing things and, and Microsoft in general has a history of releasing things that aren't quite ready yet. And for me personally, it's scary. It's very scary to trust something that I know that sometimes they deploy things a little half-baked uh, to trust them to push out uh, reliable infrastructure code to keep my services running. So I take that into consideration with Azure. Um, and AWS has, again, the best SLA, I think, that you could possibly ask for, which SLA service level agreement. A good SLA is 99.9 .9 something. AWS is like 99.999. Like, like a lot of companies promise that, but AWS usually delivers for the most part. There's been a couple of notable incidents uh, that have made the entire world shut down, what, what feels like the entire world shut down when AWS goes down. But for the most part, AWS is very, very reliable. And I, I, I can't forgive Microsoft for the one day that all of Microsoft Teams went down because someone forgot to update a certification. Um, or sorry, a certificate. So <laughs> one certificate took down all of Teams. So it just makes you think about how they build some of that stuff on the back end. But I digress. Going into topic number three. So topic number three, we are going to be talking about the global infrastructure of wow, the actual physical footprint that all of these cloud providers touch. Okay, so every inch of the earth that has an internet connection, a cloud provider is tapped into at this point. Whether you're on Google Drive, whether you're on iCloud, whether you're on you know any website that's feeding from a cloud provider, the cloud providers can touch everywhere on earth. Now, how physically present are cloud providers around the world? Well. Azure actually wins this. So as far as the bigger stick goes, Azure actually wins. They have more data centers and more regions than AWS does. So if you're in a, it, this is a good use case actually for Azure, right? When you talk about latency and, and possibly political instability, things like that. I, I, I will not talking about the United States here. What I'm talking about is a, you know, country like Lithuania or like, you know, a smaller com country that you may have a really high fast compute application and the nearest data center for AWS may be pretty far away. Again, we're, we're using hypotheticals here, but there may be a specific use case as to why you really want to go with Azure because of where that data center is located. Uh, in a place like United States, really that's not a big issue. Um, I have stuff deployed in all four regions in the United States and Canada, and then a couple of international regions. Um, it's it's really they all they all talk to each other just fine and they're all very very quick between each other so it's not that big of a deal um, at least not in the United States but again other countries I could see that that issue um, like we talked about before though so you know AWS has the services and Azure has the physical locations down now 
in addition to the physical presence, we talk about experience. So Microsoft has obviously been around way longer than AWS. I mean, Microsoft was booming, I think, by the time the Jeff Bezos even started Amazon, right? I mean, it's been around for a very long time. So they definitely know their way around software. Now, with that being said, AWS was the original pioneer, for the most part, in cloud computing. Uh, specifically with the EC2 service, which is where you host servers in the cloud, that was AWS that really pushed out the blueprint for how a cloud can benefit a company. So I think that AWS definitely has the experience in the cloud over Azure as well. And also, just from my personal opinion, both service providers are great about their support. Hands down, they both have great support. AWS just seems to, you seem to be able to get to someone knowledgeable in the matter much quicker. Just personally, I just feel like, you know, if, if you're a company and you're looking for support on how to build out AWS services or, or Azure services, and you're trying to decide, you know, which cloud provider, I would definitely say AWS from the support aspect because they also offer the ability, and I'm sure Microsoft does too, but just from my personal experience, AWS is really great. They offer in-person training. It's not free, but it's available. And so you can have your entire teams trained by AWS. You can have everyone brought up to speed. It's really, really nice. So that is definitely something to consider, uh, in my opinion, when you're talking about onboarding or uplifting to the cloud. Number four, third-party integrations. So both Azure and AWS have great integration capabilities with basically anything. Um, I, I would say it's a tie, except for the fact that Microsoft really actually wins this one. Um, Azure is definitely the integration king because of Microsoft authentication. The only one that really beats people on integration is Google. Um, in my opinion, just because Google has the ability to integrate with it, what seems like absolutely everything. Um, and it's probably used more from a personal level more than Microsoft, but Microsoft owns the business side of integration. Uh, with the Graph API, you can basically take you know any app inside of Microsoft, any, any service inside of Azure, and all of it can be automated and all of it can be integrated extremely easy. Um, this also brings us to what I, it's not a third party integration as far as Microsoft's concerned, but it is a third party integration to everyone else. And that is Active Directory. So Active Directory, for those of you that don't know, is what runs basically every company in the world. It's say for very small companies and companies that just for whatever reason decide not to use it. But for, I would say 95% of companies, there is Active Directory and that is a Microsoft product. And that is how you log into a computer with your company credentials and you can access exactly what you need. And it's how systems administrators and systems engineers deploy policies and rules and they track assets, everything, everything relies on Active Directory and those user profiles in there. So having the ability to have Active, Active, Active Directory and you have Azure Active Directory now, which is the cloud version of that, directly integrate with your services and your applications all within the same ecosystem is extremely valuable to customers today uh, for everyone who uses Active Directory. And, it's, and, and so to point out, it's not to say that you can't do that with AWS. You absolutely can. But then you have Active Directory and you have AWS. So you're going to run into, of course, at some point, if those connections break for whatever reason, or you decide to you know kill off AWS, or you decide to kill off Azure, it kind of leaves you in a sticky situation because you're like, well, I've got all my Microsoft stuff and I got all my AWS stuff. And so now you've got to figure out how to bridge all those things and keep those bridges alive. So again, it's just an extra layer of failure compared to if you were all in Microsoft. So a very interesting um, thing to think about is if you want everything in a single pane of glass, then you should probably go Azure instead of AWS. Number five, and this is the most important. In fact, this is worth probably two or three points uh, in my opinion, compared to all the other pointers, because while both services are very reliable, while both services are very robust, and while most of the time both services respect a 99.99% SLA, there is one major difference, and that would be the documentation and the development communities around these two service providers. AWS has been leading the ability for DevOps people to grow and learn together more than any other platform. They, 
AWS has specific training modules that are free to the public. And then for a very reasonable price, I think it's like $50 a month, you can have access to all AWS training modules that they also provide to their employees too. So it's a very, very enticing thing. And again, Microsoft has something similar. So they have something similar, but the numbers of the market share speak to the volume an 11% gain on AWS. And that's mainly because DevOps managers and DevOps engineers and software developers, they all prefer AWS because it's just easier to work with. It's more streamlined and the community is there to where now, just like any other programming language on Stack Overflow or another coding site, you have all the information on the internet. Whereas with Azure, you're still having to sit there, Google, contact support a lot more. With AWS, you really don't need to contact support. Someone has tried to do what you're doing by now in AWS for the most part, or at least pieces of what you're trying to do, and they can help you do it. Uh, all the way from you know all the orchestration efforts to setting up the networking side of things, there are forums and discussions out there for AWS, which means that you can learn without having to waste all those support hours if you have an allocated set number of support hours. So think about all of these things as you go in. And now onto the conclusion, everyone, where I tell you which is the king in 2023. And that, to me, personally, is still AWS. Uh, AWS is going to be the king for at least the next three to five years, in my opinion, just because they continue to develop, they continue to grow, they continue to release new services at a much faster pace than any of their competitors. So AWS will continue to remain king in 2023 and all the way on. So if you're wanting to learn uh, you know, a certain cloud provider, definitely go with AWS. Uh, the only other final thought I will leave with on Azure is that a lot of companies have a hybrid environment. A lot of companies, and in fact, most companies, I would say, have some level of a hybrid environment. So you might have Azure Active Directory. And in every company I've worked at, we've had AWS and we've had Azure Active Directory and they've worked seamlessly together. It just takes a little bit of extra effort, but they work just fine together because AWS makes sense from our application standpoint, but Azure Active Directory obviously makes sense from a business management standpoint. And so you can have both and they can both coexist in the, in the world. So think about these things. Again, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and like this video and make sure to subscribe so you get more cool content. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you later.